Hello again, and welcome to the screencast in Light and Optics Unit. Uh, before we get too far into all the different parts of light, I think it's important to take a step back and ask the question, what is light, and where does it come from? Now, the, f the deep physics behind what is light, you'll get into in much uh, more complicated physics, and it talks about waves of light and particles of light and how light is both but not and it, it gets confusing but I want to just talk about what is light what do we consider light to be and where does it come from a lot of this is probably going to be a review for you from uh, younger grades but it takes but a minute to go through it so let's do that first of all in the very simplest terms light is energy that you can see Light is the form of energy that you can see. There are both natural and man-made sources of light. Um, natural sources of light we automatically think of, of course, our sun and the candle flame. Uh, both, yes, both quote-unquote fire, uh, as many people have said before, uh, but not quite. Uh, but the sun and fire are the most common uh, ways to think of natural light. We can also think of natural light as something pr uh, produced in nature. And natural light would be a, a source of uh, a light called bioluminescence. And bioluminescence is when light energy is produced by organisms within their own body. They have these uh, ability to control chemical reactions within their bodies. And when they mix their chemicals, so to speak, uh, they glow. And uh, they glow quite brightly. Sometimes it's for defense. Sometimes it's for attracting uh, prey. Uh, but this ability to uh, glow life glow that's what bioluminescence means bio meaning uh, light and luminescence meaning to glow or, or, or to have light uh, that ability gives them a very unique property and we I would consider that a form of natural light something that we're not uh, making um, other sources of light uh, are clearly man-made now just as a side fact here the Sun gives us something known as radiant energy light energy okay here's a staggering stat that it less than one tenth of a millionth of a percent of the sun's energy actually reaches Earth. Okay, so hear that again. Less than one tenth of one millionth of a percent of the sun's energy reaches the Earth. All the rest of it escapes permanently into the vastness of outer outer space or is absorbed by other bodies. Uh, anything that's not produced by the sun or fire or, uh, or bioluminescence uh, is an artificial light source. It's created by us, okay? Because sunlight's not always available. And we've been fortunate enough to have very bright people in the past, huh? get it bright, very bright people in the past to come up with uh, ways to produce light so that we aren't sitting in the dark all the time. Now, there are four ways uh, that uh, we've produced light uh, artificially incandescent light, fluorescent light, phosphorescent light, and the last one, chemiluminescent light. Okay, so let's go through each one of these just one by one and break them down exactly what they are. Now the first type of light, incandescent light, you're very familiar with. It's the simple light bulbs at home. Okay, And these light bulbs here, okay, uh, they are very familiar to us because they've been around for a very long time. Uh, they are superheated to give off such a high temperature that it will emit, and emit means to give off, light. That's incandescent. Uh, flames can be considered incandescent, but they're not artificial. And these types of light bulbs are incandescent. Okay. Now, what's cool about these light bulbs is if we look at them very, very closely, you can always see them inside as that little coil. And the way it works is that when you screw the light bulb into the socket, the electrical current runs around uh, the metal part there, is conducted in through the light bulb, up through the top and it hits that wire. And that wire that's uh, being outlined there, right right here, just to emphasize, uh, it's a filament. And that filament is made of a metal called tungsten. And that metal has been chosen because it doesn't actually uh, uh, melt. It superheats when electricity runs through it. And it glows white hot. And if you ever try to change a light bulb right after you've turned it off, you know how hot those things can get. And because it glows so brightly and so white hot, we get light from it. And if you ever turn a light bulb or an incandescent light off quickly, you'll notice you can see that filament just kind of slowly losing its heat or losing its uh, uh, energy. So that's incandescent, a, a traditional light bulb. Uh, the next type of light is called fluorescent. Uh, in some cases, we can create light by using high energy particles that will glow. Fluorescent light is an example. Now what we do here is we use the idea that 
uh, high energy particles will absorb invisible light and turn into visible light. It's a little confusing. Uh, so if, let's take a look at an actual fluorescent bulb. Now fluorescent bulbs are the ones that you find in schools or shopping malls or movie theaters. They're the long tubes, okay, really uh, thin pins on either end. Now, if you look on the left there, you see the two pins, as well as two pins on the right. But the two pins on the left uh, have what's called an electrode attached to it. And when those pins make contact with an electrical current, the electrode heats up. And that actually causes the mercury vapor inside to ignite, but it gives off invisible light. We can't see it. Okay, So the, the gas inside ignites and gives off invisible light. What actually gives us a light that we see is the coating around the tube, which is why the coating appears what or the tube appears white. That coating, okay, is a phosphor coating. And when the invisible light strikes the, the phosphor coating, the coating glows and we get that very cool uh, and I mean cool as in like temperature cool, very cool blue. And I'll talk more about what cool and warm lights are in class. Uh, but the phosphor coating glows and we get that we get the light emitted in the classrooms. This gives us also the explanation why when you flick a light switch, it doesn't turn on instantly like an incandescent bulb. It takes that millisecond more because you're igniting the vapor, which then causes the coating to glow. Okay. A little more complex, but still a very cool idea to generate light. Okay, So what we have here is we have ultraviolet light, which is uh, energy absorbed by particles, which is then energy absorbed by particles, which then makes visible light energy. So you have these three steps in a fl uh, fluorescent light bulb that generate light. Okay, uh, Two things uh, about uh, fluorescent light that we need to acknowledge here. There are severe disadvantages and equally severe advantages to using these. Disadvantages to using fluorescent light, they are expensive to buy than incandescent light. Just go to any Walmart and pick up a regular light bulb versus the new, as some people call, curly Q light bulbs of fluorescence. A uh, dollar something for one versus sometimes six or twelve dollars for another. Very expensive to buy. And the mercury and phosphor inside, they're toxic. So when those bulbs break, they're supposed to be vented into, uh, into outside air so you're not inhaling it. Okay, Very expensive to buy and uh, can be toxic. However, Here's where the advantages start to maybe outweigh the disadvantages. Uh, the advantage is that it is energy efficient, and although it costs more to purchase, it lasts you much longer, so you're saving money over time. So maybe a bit of a trade-off, uh, expensive to buy, not buying as much. Uh, we can talk more about that later. You can discuss with mom and dad, and maybe, maybe they have their own opinions on why to go one way or the other. Now, the third type of light, phosphorescent light, is a source of light that is very similar to fluorescent in that energy is absorbed. Okay, And so what happens here is that if you have a piece of phosphorescent material that's been sitting on your counter, uh, light particles from the, the light will actually be absorbed by the phosphorescent material. And then when you remove the light, the phosphorescent material will glow. These are glow-in-the-dark like stickers or stars that you see on, on your walls, right? These particular uh, items are phosphorescent. The the phosphor inside uh, these um, toys or these, these articles, same type of phosphor that's in a, a fluorescent bulb, the phosphor absorbs light energy or light particles and then when you take away the light and put it in a dark room, it gives off light energy. And we call that phosphorescent. Okay. Last one is chemiluminescent. And chemi, it, clearly, it indicates chemical. The chemical reactions that occur in some reactions give off radiant energy or light energy, which is known as chemiluminescent. Glow sticks, emergency signal lights, this is chemiluminescence. Okay? Whatever's inside the glow sticks, you break them. You cause two chemicals to uh, uh, combine, which then generate or produce light. Chemiluminescent, uh, light from chemicals. So. Knowing the natural sources of light, fire, sun, and bioluminescence, as well as the four sources of artificial light, the incandescent light, the fluorescent light, the phosphorescent light, and the chemilum chemiluminescent light, are, are important to know, just so we have uh, an idea of where light is coming from and what types of light sources are available to us. Okay? Uh, that's it in this screencast. Uh, very easy once again. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you found something useful.